Welcome back to another travel vlog. Today's destination, New York City. Unlike my previous travel vlogs, I've actually been to New York twice before. This is my third time. So that means no Empire State Building and no Statue of Liberty. But despite that, we're in for a good complete vlog. Mostly. What do I mean by that? We'll get to that later, but first, let's start the vlog. And this time we start off at Marshall's where I'm buying a suitcase and... No, just kidding, we start off in my room. And as usual, night before, in my room, getting packed. As you can see. And okay, I can't spend too much time. I have to be at the airport at 5.30 a.m. in the morning. Well, I didn't really grab any new stuff except one thing. But it's very important. It's the lens I'm currently using on the camera. Canon RF 14 to 35 millimeter 4.0. It's replacing my old full frame wide angle lens. What does this one have over the other? Well, lots. It has better autofocusing, it has a sharper image, and my favorite, well, it's doing its thing right now. Image stabilization, specifically physical in body image stabilization. Okay, without getting too techy, but basically when I use an RF camera with an RF lens, the sensor and the lens work together and I get a nice stable image, like so. You know, I'm not using that Casey Neistat style Joby tripod, I'm just using my hand. So right now my Peter McKinnon backpack is set to burst because I had to pack all my high-tech electronic goodies, except my drone, in there because, holy crap, modern day air travel is highway robbery. Not only do I have to pay for more leg room, but I also gotta pay more for checking in my luggage. And those fees go much higher the more I need to check in. Anyway, gotta put the camera away. Gotta take care of something on my computer, which I packed away. See you on the other side of security, good buddy. So what did I mean earlier by highway robbery? Well, it's definitely not that, but it counts. This is what I meant. This is what I meant by Highway Robber. Oh. Okay then. That's a paid extra for that not known. Okay, so entrance through security went much smoother than I thought. Turns out they have this new high-tech x-ray machine where you don't even need to take out your electronics or laptop. Now, at the time of filming, the federal mask mandate is still in effect. And so yeah, as of filming this, the federal mask mandate is still in effect. And while I do have to wear my mask for a good five and a half hour flight, this here is a Korean face mask. You can get these at uh, your Korean grocery store or Amazon. It's designed in a way to give space between the fabric and your mouth. Give me a little bit of breathing room. Oh, another thing. Food, as far as air travel is concerned, it's a joke. I mean, it's always been a joke. There's a reason why Jerry Seinfeld made so much of his material around it. But now, with COVID going on, your only food options on planes are peanuts and sodas. Do what I did. Make sure you carbo-load before getting on the plane. Ooh, grapes. Didn't know I had them. And, um, if this place looks weirdly familiar. This is Terminal 4 American Airlines at LAX. So yeah, I flew with American to Philly, Atlanta, and Hong Kong. Smash the like button if you like corporate consolidation. Okay, they're boarding, but it's going to be a while before they call my group number. Why am I getting a spot in line so early? Anyway, this is why, right here. 
Then we took off from LA and... Well, that's it. This had to be the most uneventful flight in history. Actually, no, I take that back. Something good did happen. A rabbi who was sitting in the row behind me let me have his food tray because he didn't want to waste any of it. So, shalom to that. I, I touched down New York after a little delightful but still pretty boring flight. Everything seemed to be go swimmingly so far. I'm just expecting something to happen. And here it is, the big tomato. Uh, no, it's an apple. Then why does it look like a tomato? Huh, looks like a but it's farting out one of those green vine ladders from Super Mario. My bag came off first. Dude, so far this has been my luckiest travel day. Best you can hope for is that nothing bad happens, but, oh man. So far, everything's coming up CRJ. The only way this can get better is with free seats to Hamilton. Right. Now there does remain the question of getting from JFK to Midtown, where my hotel is. And here's what you do. First, Hop on the Sky Train and take it all the way to Jamaica Station. Then, while there, purchase a ticket for the Long Island Railroad. Oh, and uh, hopefully the ticket machine won't give you a hard time like it did with me. Make your way down to Platform 2 and climb aboard. Once on board, glide along to Penn Station in Midtown, where my hotel is thankfully a block and a half north of the station on 8th. Now, upon booking this trip, I found out that, uh, hotels are pretty pricey, especially if you're staying in Midtown. Thankfully, my hotel, which, by the way, used to be the headquarters of the New Yorker magazine, is in an excellent location in Midtown, and I was able to get it at an affordable price. Well, affordable by New York City standards, that is. Uh, this place will be pretty pricey, as you'll soon see. I mean, it's a nice hotel in a nice area. Why are they charging such relatively cheap rates for it? I think I know why. Tell me you're not getting serious backroom vibes from this place. So, the first thing I wanted to do once I settled down was have some nice, authentic New York eats. And thankfully, there was one nearby my hotel. Kitty Corner from Madison Square Garden is New York Pizza Suprema, one of the many pizzerias in New York. Grab yourself a slice of cheese, do the iconic fold, and take a nice big bite. One word, forget about it. Now, some New Yorkers might be in my comment section yelling at me saying, Oh, why didn't you go to Bleecker Street? Why didn't you go to Famous Rays? Oh, why did you blah, 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 blah. One, I was still pretty jet lagged from my trip and I didn't want to travel far. And number two, it has, to me at least, the mark quality of a great New York restaurant, a picture of the man himself, Anthony Bourdain. And just to go off on a brief tangent here, and whether you know it or not, I take a lot of inspiration from him. And sure, he's a great chef and a great food writer, but there's this real against the grain left fieldedness about him that was awesome. And trust me, without Anthony Bourdain, there is no taste cut in the kitchen. <sighs> Can't wait to meet you at the big hot dog stand in the sky. Anyway, back to the vlog. So it's my first full day in New York and uh, thanks to the jet lag, I got up late. Uh, thankfully, this city is pretty forgiving if you wake up late. Well, if you're a tourist, that is. Street. Not so much if you stand in the middle of the side or trying to figure out where to go. For example, if you come across some diners here in New York City, they're open 24-7. Like this place, the TikTok Diner. 
Uh, thankfully, no half-naked twerking teenagers here. Just classic American breakfast. Wow, busy New York City with a steamy sewer entrance. Tell me that's something not out of the movies. While you're in America, please tip the wait staff. Seriously, I overheard people saying whether they should tip or not. They shouldn't have to tip, they should be paid in more. Cue the American Dad Club. Yeah, it should, but we don't live in Shouldland. Ah, Shouldland, where clean cut kids cruise Shouldland Boulevard, and the Shouldland High football team gets their optimistic asses kicked by their crosstown rival, Reality Check Tech. Bottom line, you're tipping your waiter? Huh, don't remember that from the episode. Been a while since I've seen the show. Car exhaust, rat piss, cigarette butts. I'm back in New York. And uh, you think that's unwelcoming? Wait till you see where I'm going next. I then hopped on the iconic New York subway to the equally iconic Grand Central Station. Yep, this station sure is grand. But you know what's not grand? I'm having to pay three and a half bucks for a water bottle. I can get this same bottle back home for a buck less. Head back on the subway, the sixth train specifically, and look out the right and you'll become the Shadow Monster Man. Ugh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, that was from Petscop. I just got done re-watching Pyrocynical's video on it. Because he promised to do a sequel to Petscop 2. Instead, chose to do a show nobody cares about and make it seven hours long. Anyway, here's what you actually see out the window. The abandoned and well-preserved City Hall Station. After that, I made my way to Rockefeller Plaza. Warning. CRJ was a complete noob and placed his lap mic too close to his face. As a result, the audio quality for the next segment suffered quite noticeably. Viewer discretion, especially for headphone listeners, is strongly advised. And that behind me is the famous 30 Rockefeller Plaza, where they filmed such shows as Late Night with Seth Meyers, The Today Show, and The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. So am I going to go inside and take the NBC Studio Tour? No. Jimmy Fallon is basic. Jimmy Fallon is basically a robot that laughs at everything, and and Seth Meyers' show is just an hour of John Oliver's table scraps, delivered with the charisma and compassion of a Chuck E. Cheese animatronic. Besides, I'm still kind of mad at NBC for what they did recently. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Them giving Conan O'Brien the short stick. I'm never forgiving them for that. NBC, you Meep. Uh... Now, speaking of NBC, the store to my right used to be the NBC gift store, but I'm glad to say they replaced it with something better. FAO Schwartz. It's your side. Hello, welcome to FAO Schwartz. Thank you. Mine can take videos. It's, you know, a poor severed dog said. That's not very cute. Honestly, how could this get worse? It's got worse. Don't touch the lion. Especially if you're allergic to latex. Whoa, someone booped you just a little too hard. Now, you think this is a giant polar bear doll, but no, this is an actual polar bear that's been stuffed. Global warming has destroyed so much that the only way to preserve them is to taxidermy them. Anyway, enough politics, let's continue to shop. For my mom and my newborn baby niece. So yeah, I got a gift for my mom and my niece. But um, what about for me? That's why I'm here. The New York Nintendo Store. Yes, you're a grown adult. You shouldn't be going to kids' stores. 
how about you shut up before I double jump my foot up your ass? Where the hell's Marina? No, you have to go to the store in Japan to get her. Man, who'd have figured Japan be more woke than us? Had that, had that, had that, had that. Unfortunately, I had that, and that's what I have now. Yeah, hey, look, it's Isabel. JK Slider. What the hell, Eugene Levy? Yes. Uh, yeah, that's nice. Um, uh, do you still do plumbing? I need help uh, with something back home. Well, I will answer you like this, uh, with a question. Where are you from? No, uh, you ain't doxing me, Mario. I'm out of here. Listen, as much as I love Mario and his games, he kind of has a reputation for being a little too, um, forward with his guests. Don't believe me? Take a look at this surveillance footage. Hey! Mom! Come here and give me your liver! The Red Yoshi is a conservative. He believes in keeping the Mushroom Kingdom monarchy. The Blue Yoshi is more liberal and wants to put an elected mushroom parliament. Orange Yoshi is too busy and is planting weed in Mario's backyard. Also, he won't shut up about crypto. So, so Bowser, what's it like working at Nintendo of America? I know when Reggie left, you had some big shoes to fill, but still, how's it going along? I'm not joking, by the way. The guy in charge of Nintendo of America really is named Bowser. Yo, I'm curious. Let's see how things are going at Nintendo of America, never mind. Uh, speaking of Nintendo, while I was there, I bought the latest Kirby game, Kirby in the Forgotten World. Oh, no, don't let the cutesiness fool you. It's going to get pretty dark. So, I'm back in my room, resting up after a long day. Sure, I've only been to a couple of places. Carrying around a heavy backpack while holding on to a heavy DSLR camera gets tiring quick. I just discovered discovered something unusual. Normally, I have a way of getting around town, and that's with Uber, but... And I would have used it to go from Rockefeller Center back to my hotel, but... But a ride from there to here would have cost $23. A taxi with tip cost me 15 Yeah, I'm just as shocked as you. Okay, so I kind of missed my trip to New York because, as you can see, it's raining. So obviously some stuff will be uh, closed down. But you know what won't be closed down? Restaurants. Let's get our New York rub-on started with the most authentic of New York breakfast is the bagel. The first place I went to is Liberty Bagels, one of many New York bagel joints. I had the classic salmon lox with avocado. After that, I then hit up Papaya King, where I had the famous Papaya Dog and Papaya Drink. <sighs> Do your thing, Internet. I then got back on the subway, enjoyed some free entertainment, and went to my final stop, Mamoon's Falafel. Not really the most luxurious uh, dining spots, but let's see how the falafel sandwich is. All right, first impressions looks nice. Ooh, I see a little falafel right there. Mmm, it's like a warm Arabic hug for the taste buds. And after visiting all three locations, I got kind of full pretty quickly. I think it was the papaya drink that filled me up. So after I was done there, I hit up the Italian restaurant in my hotel. Check this out. This menu literally has a backlight. No, I'm not doing anything funky in post-production. I mean, it literally has a backlight. 
It's my first time here. You don't know me. And yeah, 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 yeah. I know New York has plenty of other great Italian restaurants, but the thing is, it was still raining outside, and I just didn't want to deal with the expensive cab. Anyway, I had a delicious Caesar salad and a beautiful spaghetti carbonara. With the New York weather all clear, I went back out exploring. Okay, stop, 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 stop. Sorry, I have to pause the vlog really quickly, but I'm getting really tired of this stupid lo-fi hip-hop. Seriously, every time a YouTuber vlogs in New York, they're always inserting that same lame, sleep-inducing hip-hop. And if you know me, you know I like to do things differently. So, instead of lo-fi hip-hop, from here on out, we are using 80s synthwave. Then resume the vlog. With the New York weather all clear, I went back out exploring. So I got off at the World Trade Center subway stop and unlike most New York subway stations, this place is pretty epic. Hope you did enjoy it because it's only gonna get depressing from here. The 9-11 Memorial, a museum that explores all that happened on September 11th, 2001. These here are all the missing people who died in the event. And this here is the North Tower communications antenna. This is the elevator motor to one of the towers. Part of the original support structure of uh, one of the towers. I heard about this. Rescue dogs were getting so depressed from finding dead bodies that firefighters had to bury themselves alive and have the dog intentionally find them to keep their morale up. So I just got done with the tour at uh, the 9-11 Museum and um, it is one of the most emotionally powerful museums you've ever seen. I mean, I was this close to shedding a tear. Oh, the, some of the more important and, dare I say, graphic stuff was not allowed to film, so little reminder for post-production. So, what was some of the stuff I was not allowed to film? Well, well, video footage of the Twin Towers crumbling down. A history of Al-Qaeda and how they planned their attack. But the most vivid thing I remember are the audio recordings of people screaming and dying just as the towers were collapsing. Whether it was an office worker calling 911 or a firefighter going in to rescue people. It really did send a chill down my spine. Well, if I can say anything to wrap this up, it's just spend as much time with your loved ones, your friends, your family, and yes, even your dogs. Because as I saw, life can take them away an instant, just like that. Well, after that experience, I need something to uh, pick me up. Where should I go?
elevator or a TARDIS. <laughs> Welcome to One World Observatory. Very nice, but uh, this isn't the only observation deck I'm going to. Where's the second one? Top of the rock observation deck here at 30 Rockefeller Plaza. Of course, the views are nice and dare I say even better than uh, World Trade Center, but um. That's not the reason why I came here. Standing here in this very spot is where meme history was made. Because it was here in 2020, DJ David Guetta stood in that spot, giving a rather tasteless tribute to George Floyd. So this record is in honor of George Floyd. Shout out to his family. Uh, a man was murdered because of racism and unchecked police power. Let's party. Oh god, I'm really glad the people around me don't speak English because that would have been really nasty out of context. Oh, and uh, while I was on top of the observation deck uploading my selfie to Instagram, my brother commented, Kick Jimmy Fallon in the butt while you're there. Okay. Hey, Fallon, say good night, you bum. And this is for laughing and looking at the camera during every sketch you've ever been in. What do you think you are, Carol Burnett? You think because she did it, it's okay for you? You haven't earned what she's earned, buddy. And once I was done there, I hit up this place. Cactus Delicatessen, one of New York's oldest and most celebrated Jewish delis. Grab your ticket, hand it to the cutter, and a sample some of that pastrami they give you. Holy crap, the size of the sandwich. Look, even I'm taken aback by it. I mean, look at that. Oh, to eat fast before the meat juices dissolve the bread. So after that full day, I then went back to my hotel room and crashed hard. In fact, I crashed so hard, I didn't get up until noon the next day. And this is why when I go on vacation, I don't like cramming as much stuff into one day as possible because I get super burnt out and to the point where I forget to have fun. But if I hate it so much, why did I do it? Well, I did want to attend Top of the Rock the first day I was there, but the weather conditions were cloudy and the visibility wasn't all that great. But that isn't to say I did absolutely nothing that day. That night, I met up with an old childhood friend who now lives in Manhattan. But before that, I had to get money out of an ATM. And this ATM just happened to be attached to the Universal Music Group building. So I just um, sent them a little message. So if you do take the New York subway, I have to point out there's a lack of uh, seating benches. That's because the city got rid of them because homeless people were sleeping on them. Greatest city in the world, New York City. Read it all in, folks. Uh, was there like a Yu-Gi-Oh card dueling game here or something? What's with that like, graffiti? Now, when people say their vacation in New York, they really just mean Manhattan. So I'm here in Queens, Jackson Heights specifically, because where we're down the street is, this is some of the best street food you'll find in New York City. Let's go.
Uh, wait, let me put my big ass camera that away, then we'll go. The first place I visited was Lhasa Fast Food. It used to be behind an old cell phone accessory shop, but now it's its own place. While I was there, I had a nice plate of steamed dumplings, or momos as they're called. Dip them in spicy sauce and chow down. Now I'm here in Flushing, otherwise known as New York's real Chinatown. And I'm here to get some real Chinese food. I hate to break it to you, but orange chicken, that ain't Chinese food. I went to Joe's Steamed Rice Rolls where they serve, well, steamed rice rolls. Afterwards, I went across the street to the New World Mall. Inside, they have a grocery store. But the main attraction is the food court in the basement. I kept it simple and had a cup of boba tea. Oh, and uh, sorry about the shaky, low-quality GoPro footage. They really aren't fond of the camera, as Mike Chen explains here. Sorry, we can't really show you guys a lot on this tour yeah. because this place literally cracks down on people that film here. Man, all this Chinese food is getting in the mood for one thing. Hot pot. Uh, not here, though. I'm going to a place out in Manhattan. That's sweet, even for me. Liquid type 2 diabetes. I know a lot of real tour guides and New Yorkers don't like coming to this place, but I'm sorry, I can't resist. I'm in Times Square. Now, don't worry. Uh, Times Square is relatively safe, but you do need to look out for our aggressive mascots and people trying to sell you their shitty music CDs. Okay, I'm out 30 bucks. This guy would not leave me alone until I bought his stupid CD. Uh, let's fix this. Help me get my 30 bucks back. Support me on Patreon. You know, I thought I was underdressed, but take a look at this. Oh no, a lady's butt. Oh please, some hot girl's butt isn't offensive. You want to see offensive? This is offensive. Shinwa, that ain't good. Don't know what Shinwa is? It's basically Chinese language news owned and operated by the Chinese government. The same Chinese government that covered up the COVID pandemic and the same Chinese government that's currently persecuting a million ethnic Uyghurs. And when Russia invaded Ukraine, we boycotted and sanctioned the hell out of them. But who cares? I gotta have my cheap Nikes. Times Square used to be home to some sleazy strung out criminals. And Okay, not much has changed. So, Times Square was once the home to the biggest collection of porno theaters outside of Vegas. And, um, and while the porno theaters are gone and Times Square is super gentrified, there are still a bunch of sleazy weirdos around here. I swear, if you spend time in New York and you're not more pro-Second Amendment by the time you leave, something's wrong with you. Wow, what an edgy joke. Hopefully that won't age horribly in a few days. All right, this place is giving me the creeps. I'm out of here. Later, I tried Chinese hot pot for the first time. Take a piece of meat, dip it in hot, flavorful broth, then into your custom-made sauce, then stuff it in your face. And for that day over, a new day begins in New York, and yeah, things kind of go south from here. What do I mean? Late last night, I came in with a pretty bad cold and I just don't have the energy to hop a subway over to Brooklyn. That doesn't mean nothing's gonna happen today. As far as famous sites goes, you know, I'm gonna have to let you down here. Now, if you're in New York and you're into video or filmmaking like I am, New York has a Disneyland for you, B&H photo. Besides, I kinda need a pick me up after today, so why not a big, nice dose of consumerism? 
support me with Patreon so I can buy this camera right here. And yeah, 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 I know a high quality video camera doesn't get me more views. I don't care. I want it. Ooh. No, oh, it doesn't work. Maybe it knows that I don't play the piano well. Underexposing will be a thing of the past once I get my hands on this. The power of the sun in my hand. Okay, too much power. I'm seeing spots. <laughs> and CRJ says, let there be light. Lots of light. This is the kind of camera your old grandma used to use or your pretentious hipster deuce nephew currently uses. Security and surveillance brought to you by the Patriot Act, Manny the Mannequin, are you related to Buster from Mythbusters by the by any chance? Now, if I could play Mario Kart like this, maybe I would buy Nintendo's lazy rehashing of Mario Kart 8. Okay, we got here some Panasonic Lumix cameras. I'll admit, it's pretty close to cinema camera quality, but here's the thing. They suck. Perfect autofocusing every time. No drifting, no drama. And that's why I like the camera. Welcome to the Ouchie Alpha Male Podcast. Today's topic, how you can use your Second Amendment right to get your wife to lose that pregnancy weight. Also, this podcast is brought to you by Ray Shadow Legends, because why not? Okay, so I found something I wanted to buy. Yeah. Are you jealous? I'm flexing. Are you jealous? Are you mad? Huh? Oh, don't worry. I have a $500 budget. I didn't come here just to buy one piece of screwing. Uh, no, wait, that's a brass bushing? That was dirtier than what I came up with. Anyway, enough talking to myself. Let's get down to business. Hey, I'm not gonna show off expensive recording equipment in the middle of New York City. So here's what I bought. I got this, the Rode Procaster microphone. Finally, I can have great voiceover audio quality. Which is great because for the longest time, I've just been pretty much doing the audio version of stuffing napkins into bras. But basically what I mean by that is I've just been basing up the bass frequencies and it just makes the final product sound so muddy. Also they tossed in this mic stand and this pop filter for free. Guys, you gotta open up a store in LA. You'd make trillions. Okay, so I hooked it up and it sounds great, right? Not exactly. I plugged it into my audio interface and turned the gain to the maximum in order to record anything audible. Even then I had to boost the sound in post. Uh, so I had to buy a preamp for it. Why well, couldn't B&H sell me one? I'm not sure. But eventually after working out the kinks, I finally got it to work. And let me tell you, this thing sounds amazing. Today's my last day. I'm financially running on fumes and I didn't get to use any of my fancy filming equipment apart from the new lens I'm using. You know what, I need to get my money's worth, so here's fancy footage of the South Bay instead of New York. So wait, why am I using drone footage of SoCal instead of New York City? Drone flying is illegal in Manhattan because New Yorkers are, understandably, a little bit paranoid about having random flying things hovering around their buildings. But what about the drone footage I used earlier? That wasn't mine, that was Casey Neistat's, and here's what he had to say about that. All that drone footage, that was like from my old vlogs back before they like made it so you're not allowed to fly a drone here. I didn't just shoot that, I swear. I also had other fancy filming equipment like my Ninja V and my telephoto lens. I could have used them, but there was no safe space to swap lenses. I also am afraid some security guard may come up to me and say, Excuse me, do you have a permit for that? 
Oh, and uh, speaking of Southern California. Now, one thing I wanted to try while I was in New York, unfortunately I got sick so I couldn't, was the famous Shake Shack. And thankfully there happens to be a location here in SoCal, specifically El Segundo. This is my first time trying a Shake Shack burger. Let's dig out. That's okay. Yeah, seven out of ten. Seven out of ten. Could use a little bit more sauce. It's fine, but as a SoCal native, I will forever be loyal to In N Out. Also, it's kind of overpriced, so forgive me if I'm not super enthused about it. Besides, I can get the same thing at In N Out for roughly seven bucks cheaper. Well, I'm not welcome back to Manhattan. It's the next day, and this cold is f***ing me harder than a orangutan on coke. I don't really have, I don't have the energy to use my big heavy DSLR to vlog. I'll, so from here on out, I'm using my phone. So originally, I was going to get back to the airport the way I came. Take the Long Island Railroad to Jamaica Station, and take the air train to JFK. Unfortunately, this is one of the most harshest colds I've ever faced. I mean, I started to get a bloody nose. It was so bad. So with my energy pretty much sapped, I had no choice but to take a cab to the airport. But here's the crazy thing. My cold might have been a blessing in disguise because I left New York on April 12th of 2020. And um, what happened on April 12th of 2020 in New York? Breaking news in Brooklyn, very distressing. A big subway shooting in Sutset Park. Uh, section of Brooklyn. Now, even though it happened in Brooklyn and it was not on the route to JFK, still the idea that it might have happened to me is frightening. That morning, my phone was blowing up like crazy. I got phone calls from my family members wondering if I'm okay. And listen, yes, I'm okay. Physically, that is. Anyway, with a literal bullet dodged, I hopped in a cab and made my way to the airport. I need to ask all you guys a favor. Never travel with a cold. If you have the money, stay an extra day just to get over it. And I'm having it right here. Once I board the plane, I'm knocking myself out. And guess what? The torture didn't stop. While I was at JFK, my flight changed gates three times. I'm sure it doesn't sound that bad, but when you consider the fact that A, I had a cold, B, I was lugging around a heavy backpack, and C, JFK is friggin' huge. It made traveling from one end of the terminal to the other and back to the other end five times more difficult. And upon returning home, I had to do multiple COVID tests. And on top of that, I thought I tied up all the financial loose ends, but I guess I didn't. And that's why it took me so damn long to get back and why YouTube is punishing me severely for it. So that was my trip to New York. And mark my words, I will return. Maybe not next year or the year after, but I'm definitely making a comeback. Recipe videos resume next week. See you then.